Hello everyone, it's Al Nigren, Executive Director and Curator of the New Jersey International Film Festival here today. We have a wonderful filmmaker interview series and we have a very special guest who I'll introduce to you in a second, but I wanted to mention to you that the International Film Festival will be taking place on June 1st, June 2nd, June 7th, 8th and 9th. There'll be screenings at 7 p.m. on June 1st and June 7th. And on the other days, there'll be screenings at 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. We have about 12 visiting artists coming that will be doing question and answer sessions at the end of the screenings. And we have a wonderful program lined up for you. We have 20 films that were selected from close to 500 entries from around the world. That means 4% of the films that uh, we received will be screening, so the creme de la creme. And so come and check us out. We'll be at Voorhees 105, which is on the Rutgers University campus in New Brunswick, New Jersey at 71 Hamilton Street. General admission is $12, $10 for students and seniors. And if you want to buy tickets in advance, you can do so. They're $14 in advance. And you can get that information at our website, which is njfilmfest.com. You can also call us at 848 9328482 Today we have a very special guest, the director of a very special film and it's called Clarence Clements, the very famous Clarence Clements, <laughs> the sax player for Bruce Springsteen's band and the subtitle of the film is Who Do I Think I Am? And the producer of the film is Joseph Amade. Yep. He's also the head of his own production company as well as distribution company Virgil Films and he's here to talk about this wonderful film. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. So Joe, Joe, tell us how did you get involved in making this film? I know you're a Springsteen fan. Springsteen fan uh, just about all my life and uh, you know years ago Clarence was still alive and there is a, a another version of this film called Who Do I Think I Am that was playing uh, the Garden State Film Festival mm. and I saw that Clarence was going to do a Q&A and I saw that the director was going to be there and uh, I had my distributor hat on at the time and I drove down to Asbury Park ended up meeting that night with uh, Nick Mead the director of the film and Clarence Clemens and that film ran somewhere around 45 50 minutes mm -hmm. and I asked both of them do you have more footage to turn this into a 90 minute feature length film and they said yeah we have 50 to 100 hours wow. and bam light bulb went off so I said, why don't we turn this into a feature length film and, and, and try to get it out? And uh, we did. We, we signed some contracts, did all the legal paperwork, and then five weeks in, Clarence passed away. And the, you know, so what do we do? We, you know, we had to change, totally change directions on where the film, you know, was going to end up being. And, and we felt, let's, let's make a tribute to Clarence, almost like a love letter. Mm -hmm. not, not a straight, you know, documentary. You know, he was born here, even though all of that's in it. But, you know, let's dwell a little bit more on Clarence's spiritual side because that was such a big part of them. Nick Mead, the director, had already made this beautiful film um, that really dealt with a, a trip to China that Nick and Clarence had made, right. where Clarence kind of finds his own spiritual calling. Mm. And that was a beautifully made, beautifully shot film. And so we used that as our base and then built or Nick and I built around that. Um, like most documentaries, things get in the way while you're making them, and a lot of things got in the way. Um, but we finally finished it this year, and I'm um, very, very proud of it, and really proud of the work that Nick, that Nick has done. Yeah, and I think you can see the film, which obviously all the interviews that you see in the film were added to this yes. version. Yes, yes. And I, I guess when I watched the film, I liked very much the way that you decided to shoot them in black and white. I mean, almost all yes. the interviews are in black and white, and uh, the idea of race is a very important subject that occurs at the very beginning of the film, and that uh, is an emphasis. Was that something that you consciously did? It was something that Nick consciously did, and, um, and I was against. I, uh, I always think about selling films, and black and white, as much as I love black and white mm -hmm. on a personal level, mm -hmm is almost a kiss of death. <laughs> so when he told me he wanted to do the interviews in black and white, I said, you're crazy. And I, that's why I'm a producer and he's a director. Yeah. <laughs> and I think... He was right. But I absolutely agree with Nick. Sorry, Joe. But no, no. You, I, you know, right. And I, th I like the way that you use the radio dial as the way to transition from yes. the interview where you go from a kind of monochrome to color yeah. for the archival stuff. And Once again, that's Nick. <laughs> yeah. 
And well, Nick was obviously also a feature filmmaker. Nick has made a couple films. Yeah. He met Clarence um, on a film called Swing that he that he directed some years ago, and um, they became best friends. Um, but he's done Bank Robber with Patrick Dempsey and a, and a couple other films. And sure, yeah, he's been he's been working. And how did you hook up with him? I mean, I met him um, in at, Asbury Park at that, that night. At that night, yeah, oh, great, I just found great. him and. Uh, we kind of, you know, it's the type of relationship that, you know, you meet somebody and you instantly connect and uh, and and I'm glad we did because, again, it was a very, very long journey, you know. Yeah. Well, how long was the journey? Uh, started when Clarence Four was alive, ago. so that's five, six years ago. Wow. Yeah, a long and time. And to get in the can. So what were the main obstacles to making the film? Uh, most of them were financial. Mm -hmm. um, there was some... Uh, personal stuff that happened to uh, um, Clarence's family that was involved in the film. I see. Um, and it just, everything just delayed things. Uh, right. And, but, you know, Nick stayed at it, I stayed at it through it all, and uh, we're very lucky that we were able, able to finish it. Yeah, so I guess maybe we can tell the, sure. the audience a little bit more about the film's const construct. I mean, it doesn't really go while well, he was born. I mean, it does say where yeah. he was born, but it, it, you don't really dwell on that too much. Yeah. The, does the film co concentrate on his career? The film really concentrates on his, the essence of Clarence, which was really spiritual. Um, the, the thing that amazed me the most throughout the entire making of this film is uh, you know, I knew Clarence as the big man on stage, like yeah. like we all do, and and we all know there's more to that. And Bruce has said it, uh, you know, in his book and uh, on Broadway that that that's one part, and it's not even the real part, you know. Right. So, but everybody that we interviewed and everybody that we met, Clarence's friends, family members, bandmates, they all said the same thing that they loved him. Yeah, I mean, but really loved him, even though. Even though he had his own, you know, idiosyncrasies. his own idiosyncrasies, they they loved him, and for a whole lot of different reasons. And even people that we met along the way that aren't in the film said the same thing. Yeah. And that's you know, and that's all spiritual, you know, um, and that's about so it's about his journey, but the the reality is it's about his journey off of the stage and away from E Street. When I met Clarence, within yeah. five minutes, he said, "Are you doing this?" because you want to meet Bruce Springsteen. And, and I said, well, I'm not going to lie to you. I would love to meet Bruce Springsteen. Everybody would love to meet you know, yeah, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Anybody who lives in New Jersey would love to. Yeah. You know? But that's not why I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. you know, I want to do this because, one, I would love to work with you, and two, I think we have something here. He was very adamant that this was not an E Street film. That's why you know, Bruce is in the film, but he's not interviewed. And that's true. Steven's not interviewed or, you know. Yes, but there's a lot of notable people. Like, I, I know we only have a little bit of time yeah. left, but Pr President Clinton is Clinton. in there. We got, we and got that's the a president. wonderful, my, yeah. my favorite, Nils Lofgren is in there, Joe Walsh, and there's so many wonderful people. And Jay people. Clemens is fantastic in it. Absolutely. And I want to tell our viewers a little bit more about the screening. It's going to be taking place on Friday, June 7th at 7 p.m. in Voorhees Hall, room 105 on the Rutgers University campus in New Brunswick, New Jersey at 71 Hamilton Street. If you want information on how to get tickets, you go to njfilmfest.com and work your way down the bottom of the page for the general information. There's plenty of uh, free parking right next to the space in university lots, and Joe will be there to take questions. So please come and join us. Come and see us. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for having us.